But we can learn a lesson from John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, because Gabriel came to speak to him. He was a priest, and Gabriel shows up. And we have to be careful that when God shows up in our life, we stop the other stuff we're doing. And we pay attention. And we don't miss the day of our visitation. Because he'll use people that are aware of his presence. And if we're just going to be tone deaf, we got to wake up. This is the most important thing that could have happened to Zacharias. He's a priest. He's supposed to know these things. There's a higher accountability for people in leadership, right? And the angel shows up and says what most angels tell people when they first show up is don't be afraid. Guess why? Because they're pretty scary. And they're bright and they're shining and like, whoa. Don't be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. What does it say? Your prayer is heard. And we don't know what prayer, it doesn't specifically say, but you could assume that because it says your wife is going to give birth, that that might have been the prayer. But even if that wasn't his prayer, why wouldn't he be praying as a priest, God, come down and destroy the Romans and give us a, a free nation again? We don't know what the prayer was, but here's Gabriel showing up right in your room and saying, don't be afraid, your prayer's been answered. Would that make you happy? Oh, I mean, Really? But no, because there's this little trick of the devil to, to use logic. And how is that going to happen? And, you know, we love a man named Joseph Garlington. He's a bishop out in Pittsburgh. He had T-shirts made up that said, get the how out of here. <laughs> and that's what, that's what, coming up here, the angel Gabriel, High-ranking angel says, you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at the birth of your son, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine or strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. He, John the Baptist, will also go before him, capital H, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Don't forget, this man's a priest. That's the last verse in the Old Testament. If anybody should have known what an amazing visitation was just explained in the last 60 seconds, it's Zacharias. He knew what Malachi 4.6 said. That the Savior was going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The voice of one, come on, crying in the wilderness, make a way for the Lord. Create a landing strip. And Zechariah said to the angel, how? <sighs> there was a show called F Troop, and that was the name of the Indian tribe. Where the heck are we? They were called the Hakawi tribe. Where the heck are we? I mean, we, we got to be really careful. I mean, we have to be so tuned in when the Lord... We're praying and praying, show us what to do, show us what to do. But if it doesn't fit the way we think it's supposed to come, we walk right past it. This man was a priest. High-ranking angel shows up and says, your prayers are answered, and you say, how? Right now, Mary was also wondering that same question, but she wasn't a priest. I don't think she was praying, Lord, impregnate me. She was going to get married to Joseph. Probably wasn't on the scope of her radar, but this man, it says, your prayer was answered. Don't ask him how. Okay? I'm an old man. My wife is well advanced in years. Well, what about Abraham and Sarah? You're a priest. You know these things. And Gabriel said, you need a time out to think about what you just said. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, they were getting time outs. The angel answered and said, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you to bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you'll be mute and not able to speak. That'll stop you from saying how. <laughs> and not able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you didn't believe my words. Come on, let's just say, Lord, forgive me for any lack of faith, for a hard heart. Anywhere callous and scar tissue has, has stopped me from believing you. I don't want to be this guy. You didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. Now, just fast forward, right? What verse was that? Luke 1, 20. 47 verses later, what 
What does it say about Zacharias? When his voice was restored, because John was born and they brought him to be dedicated eight days later, and then what are you going to name him? And they give Zacharias a little thing to write on because his wife said John because the angel told him that was going to be the name, right? And as he writes down John, he's able to start speaking again. You think the time out worked? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at what he says. He sang from the fullness of the Spirit, a prophetic blessing. May the Lord God of Israel be blessed indeed. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm just going to try to make it current, okay? How many church services have you gone to when you had to wear a mask the whole time? Like, shouldn't we be grateful that we could actually sing out loud now and not have to worry about the mask? Like, that wasn't that long ago that we were having to do that. And we, we forget because then we're on to the next thing. But what I don't have, but what about all the things I do have? And if any other season in the year is about gratitude for what we do have, it's now. Light shining in the darkness. The star up at the top of the tree to remind us right now, you may have your own opinions about Christmas trees. So we like them. And we really like the way Sandy makes the Christmas tree, don't we? Look at what he says. He prophesies. This man who, who in the presence of Gabriel faltered says, God's intervention has begun. With the birth of his son, God's intervention has begun. And he has moved to rescue us, the people of God. And the Lord has raised up a powerful sign of liberation for us from among the descendants of God's servant, King David. As was prophesied through the mouths of his holy prophets in ancient times, God will liberate us from our enemies and from the hand of our oppressors. Psalm 106.10. Is that true today? Is God still in the liberation business from oppression? Yes. To think that that doesn't happen. And, oh, people don't need deliverance anymore. Once you become a Christian, you don't need deliverance. We beg to differ. I hope you don't. That would be awesome. But it's not a negative if you do, okay? We want to get the critters out. All of them. Verse 72, God will show mercy, promised to our ancestors. Upholding and abiding covenant that he made with them, remembering the original vow that he swore to Abraham, from whom all are descended. God will rescue us from the grasp of our enemies so that we may serve him without fear all the days in holiness and justice in the presence of the Lord. There's a guy who could only say how is now prophesying and he needs an extra 10 minutes because he can't stop. And you, my son at the baby dedication, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will be the one to prepare the way for the Lord, which is what it says in Isaiah 40, verse 3, so that the Lord's people will receive knowledge of their freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. All this will flow from the kind and compassionate mercy of God. So my testimony is, is not just that I was doing reckless things, is that the reckless things I was doing were driven by trying to medicate my pain. Doing the drugs is bad enough. Like, that could kill you. But we don't always make the connection that the dumb things you do when you're high. I can't even describe how dumb they were. And when it says the kind and compassionate mercy of God, Anybody else can relate? Like, there's no way you deserve to be forgiven. Why? I had a guy pound his fist on the table one time say, why would he forgive me? It doesn't seem fair. That's, that's what he's saying. The guy is saying, why would he forgive me? Because he knew what happened. And partly why he was pounding the table is because we then also have to forgive other people. It's really hard. When you don't know the Lord, boy, it's really hard, isn't it? But he'll give you the grace to do it. Because as the grace has been extended to you, you're able to extend it to other people. Then, huh, this time out really worked on Zacharias. A new day is dawning, he says. The sunrise from the heavens will break through in our darkness. And those who huddle in night, those who sit in the shadow of death, will be able to rise and walk in the light. Drug-free in my case. 
Unless you count caffeine, then that's a problem, but <laughs> that's legal at least. 